Hello, my name is Karen Dorber. I'm the Chief Nurse here at Bradford Teaching Hospital and um, what I'd like to talk today is about PPE, when to wear it, where to wear it, what to do, what not to do, but also to answer some questions because over the last few days and few weeks I've been asked lots of questions about PPE and I know people are still really confused about it. So I'd like to introduce uh, my colleague Claire Chadwick who today is our PPE Hi. Safety Officer. So Claire, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Claire Chadwick. I'm Nurse Consultant for Infection Prevention and Control here at Bradford Teaching Hospital. And what we thought we'd do is, first of all, talk about masks and when and where, when and where to wear them. So Claire, you've got a variety of masks in your hands. Yeah. And just tell me the difference between the masks. So these two are both fluid repellent surgical masks. And these are the ones that you'd wear when you're providing direct patient care within two metres in a clinical setting. And then these are the FFP3 respirators. And these are the ones that you wear when you're doing aerosol generating procedures or you're in the presence of a patient having an aerosol generating procedure. Who's this? Oh, it's Karen Snape. Karen, are you alright? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, what's, what's going on here then? What do you mean? Your, your face mask, it's on your head. Yeah, I don't need it at the minute. I'm just going somewhere else. Well, the thing is, when you go in places, what you need to do, if you're not wearing it, you need to take it off and you probably need to put it in the bin. Right. Because what you've done with that mask is you've contaminated it with your hair. And then you've got to put it back on your face and breathe all of those bugs in that have been in the air around you. So I've seen a few people uh, with the masks on their heads. Um, it's better just to put it in the bin, that's the safest thing to do. But if you're not wearing your mask, don't wear your mask. So, we're talking then about the FFP3 masks. Yeah. So these are the ones that um, people are fit tested for. Yes. And just, just explain that to me, what, what fit testing or fit checking is. So fit testing is a qualitative test where you put a hood over you and you wear the mask and we squirt a um, tasting solution, either bitter or sweet, inside the hood and we give you various exercises to do and then you tell us whether you can taste the bitter or sweet chemical. Just hang on a minute, did you say bitter or sweet? Bitter because or I'm sweet. sure I got the bitter one. That's, that's not right, I would have much preferred the sweet one for next time. I think the please. sweet one is particularly oh. thick. Okay then. There you go. So, some staff are worried because they might have been fit tested for a mask that looks yeah. like that but then they're given a mask like this. So, so what should they do if they're unsure? So they will, well, when they're fit tested, they, they will know whether they're this shape, which is what we call the duckbill shape, or whether they have this shape, which is the cone shape. Um, we've had different manufacturers' uh, masks in the trust, but the shapes are the same. So this is a duckbell and this is a cone shape. And when you're fit tested, you will know which shape fits your face. So if you cannot be fit tested, yes. there's something called a fit check that can be done. So, so what does that entail? So a fit check is where you put the mask on. Shall I show you? Yeah. Karen Snape's back. Karen. Right. Hi. What's, what's going on here then now? So we've talked about having the mask here. So um, which bit are you protecting now? Well, this is an FFP3 mask. Okay. So, so, so that's the one that you should be fit tested yeah. for and it should cover your nose and your mouth right. so um, again it's not doing much use when it's down there so if you're not wearing it what should you do bin it take it take off take it off and bin it okay so thank you very much Karen thank you so so I have this this duckbell mask on because I know that I've been fit tested and this fits me um, I don't fit the cone shaped ones it's just the shape of your face so I've pushed it in to my nose here and it fits under my chin and there's no air coming through up my eyes or out the sides. And when I do take some sharp breaths, the mask goes in and out. Okay, if it's got a valve on it, you put your hand over the valve and watch the mask suck onto your face. Okay, and that would tell you that you've got a seal so yeah. nothing's coming in. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Claire, just one thing that confuses me is, 
you know, everybody says that these, the FFP3 masks, are the best masks. So, so why would I want to wear that mask? Because surely that's going to keep me safer, isn't it? Okay, so it's the difference between aerosol generating and droplet generating. Okay. So I've got a really rudimentary experiment here just to try and show people the difference between droplet and aerosol. So this is a water container with a hand pump. And if I squirt it up... You can see, you can you can see, see the it coming down. Yeah. And it falls to the ground fairly quickly. Okay? So that would be droplet, and that's when you'd use the surgical mask, which is fluid repellent. And the droplets fall to the ground fairly quickly. And then for aerosol generating procedures, this is an aerosol, and this is what it generates. So okay. I do it again. So that's a really fine particle mist. It stays airborne for a considerable amount of time and the particles are very fine, less than 5 microns. And that's when you'd use an FFP respirator, which is 99% effective for any particles. So it's a bit like when I'm at home. So if I squirt air freshener or deodorant and breathe in, I can smell it and yes. you, it catches you in the throat. Yeah. But if I was to squirt, say, um, Mr Muscle yes. to clean my cooker, I don't tend to breathe that in because the drops are heavier. Yes. And that's why. So this is to yes. protect big drops. Yes. And this is for microfine drops. Yes. And that's why that's for the aerosol, aerosol generating procedure. The word that I can't say. Yes. You'll never guess who's here again. Karen. Hi. Are you all right? Yes, thank have you. Have you just yeah. been to one of the clinical areas? I have, yes. So, so I'll take my mask off because I'm not in a clinical area now. Okay, so, so that's great. But, but what people don't um, realise when they do this is that... That mask now, you're about to go back in the clinical yeah. area and put it back up. Yeah. And at that point, I've been here breathing and talking to you and my germs have gone in there and dirt and muck will have gone in there and then you're about to put that back up to your face and breathe that in. Right. Mm. So it's probably not best for you to do that. So what we're saying is, if you're going from clinical area to clinical area, yeah. keep the mask on. Right. If you're going from a clinical area to a non-clinical area, you're going home or you're going to Marks and Spencers, just take it off, you can put it in the bin and when you come back, just pick up a clean mask and put a clean mask on. Right, that's Is that cool. okay? Yeah, that's cool. Thanks, Karen. We thought we'd talk a little bit about um, eye protection and gloves as well. So, um, Claire here has brought some of the eye protection that you might have seen around the truss. So, Claire, again, wh when would I wear this? So this is when there's a risk, assa risk assessment for exposure to blood or body fluids if you're in the normal clinical area. Okay. Um, but if you're doing an aerosol generating procedure, then you'd always wear eye protection as well. And is this okay? Will this protect me from, from that? Yes, yes. Um, it fits right round, goes onto your eyes, just over your forehead and fits you right down to your chin. So it's protecting the most vulnerable part of you, which is um, from the head to the neck. So what about your arms? So, so what happens with your arms? Because do I not need to have my arms covered all the time and, and other parts of my body? No, um, the UK has had a policy for bare below the elbows for a number of okay. years now. So what we'd advise is if you get any splashes to your arms or your hands at all, that you do a full wash from the elbows downwards. Okay. And is, is that because, so, so if I get the virus on my arms, can that penetrate my skin? No, absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. So the exception to that, I think, is if you're doing an aerosol generating procedure, which is yeah. when you would have wear the full gown, is that correct? Yes. And, and that is just because it's in the air for longer yes. and you're more exposed? Yes. Okay, I can see you've got another pair of goggles there. Yeah, so these, these are eye protection as well and they're perfectly good for protecting. So you've got your mask that protects your mouth and your nose and then you've got a, a, an eye protection goggle here that's reusable and you just use a disinfectant wipe to wipe them. You'd wipe them from the inside out because obviously the outside is the dirtiest part and then these are reusable. And then we're going to be sending those to the decontamination unit for every shift to get them fully decontaminated before the next shift. Okay, so what, what about gloves, Claire? Because I've seen lots of people wearing gloves walking down the corridors. Um, I've seen people with gloves on with a mask, with just gloves, no mask, and all sorts of combinations. So what's the correct combination? 
So if you're providing direct patient care, mm -hmm. you'd obviously have your surgical face mask on, or if you're doing an aerosol generating procedure, you'd have an FFP3 on. If you're just providing direct care in a, a non-aerosol generating area, you'd have an apron right. and normal non-sterile gloves on. Okay, okay. If you're doing an aerosol generating procedure, then you'd have a fluid repellent gown on and also non-sterile gloves. Now, most of the gloves have long cuffs on them, so okay. that they go over the sleeve of the arm. If we don't have any of those, it's okay to wear the normal non-sterile nitrile gloves. Okay. Right, that makes sense. I think I've got that in my head. Karen, what's going on? What, what are we doing here then? So it's fine, I've got my gloves on, but... Okay, you want to make sure there's yeah. extra clean. Yeah, so I've come off a clinical area, so I'm just okay. sanitising my cold with my hands. Yes, then... so we'd not recommend that you do that because it impacts on the integrity of the glove and other things and they never look very slippy and shiny. Um, the best thing to do, you've left that patient, you've left that clinical area, take your gloves off, put them in the bin. If you're near a sink, wash your hands for 20 seconds, sing happy birthday twice. Right. Or you can gel your hands and rub your hands for 10 seconds, which I think must be happy birthday once. But um, we never ever wash or gel gloves. Gloves off in the bin. Gloves off in the bin. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Karen. So, Claire, um, the latest guidance has come out yes. um, just today, yeah. um, and that talks about in detail. So, joking apart, we will be circulating what to wear and when to wear in each of the clinical area. We've had a bit of fun today to try and get some key messages out, but the links to, on the internet site will show you quite clearly when and what to wear and at which point. Claire, is there anything you want to add to that? Um, no, uh, just protect yourself and obviously hand hygiene is the single most important thing that you can do to protect yourself and others. So if you're going from patient to patient or from episode of care, so if you're going to do an aseptic procedure as per the five moments of hand hygiene, then please wash or gel your hands. So our main job as a hospital and as a, as a trust is to keep our staff and our patients safe so we would never expect you to do anything in the incorrect PPE so always think safety first um, you're doing an absolutely amazing job everything's changing by the minute keep doing what you're doing keeping yourself safe keeping each other safe keeping your patients safe thank you and special thanks to our guest Karen Snape so thank you Karen take a bow Thank you.